All right, thanks for uh, sticking around for my talk. Um, I'm actually a little sad that I'm not giving my, uh, my research talk here, because I think it would have dovetailed nicely with, with the last one. I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about that uh, in, a, for, in a couple of slides. Uh, but primarily what I'm going to be talking about today is a, uh, uh, a CE program that I've been helping with, uh, which is putting uh, uh, CE alumni, so RSI and USABO alumni, into internships with the DOD um, and trying to increase the, the CE's impact beyond just the high school years and, and moving forward. Um, so my background, uh, I started at RSI 97, and then I've been with RSI one or two times since then. Uh, more recently, I've been with RSI as a mentor, uh, a professor in the first week talking about sleep and why you should get some. I liked the, uh, the commenter yesterday who reinforced that uh, the submarine got to, uh, put together a lot better uh, when, there was, when people got some sleep and a day off. I recommend that to my students every year. Some of them even take me up on that and sleep at night. Um, some of them sleep in the lab, too, uh, as I've noticed. Uh, so I, I helped out as a mentor a few times, and now I've uh, been a primary mentor along with uh, Don Wendell here for the last couple of years. Uh, uh, I was showing a uh, slide from our mentee from last year who, who's actually here this weekend, which is awesome. Uh, my background is as a psychologist. I study, uh, studied psychology, task switching, that sort of thing. I'm currently a cognitive scientist at the U.S. Army Natick Soldier Research Development and Engineering Center, which is out in Natick, Massachusetts. Uh, it's most famous for things like textiles. Uh, it's the reason there's digicamo uh, and better shades of camouflage as well. And most, uh, most famously, uh, they now have an MRE pizza. So they have a pizza that is shelf-stable for three years with no refrigeration, and I am told that it is better than some frozen pizzas you've had. Um, so the, the things I'm working on these days uh, are primarily swarm robotics. So like I said, going in with the, the last talk, uh, AI is getting better, um, but if you're trying to have a whole bunch of small things that are not incredibly smart and don't have supercomputers behind them, if you can team them up with a human, so human-machine teaming, um, if you had humans driving them, uh, and sharing the responsibility of who does the thinking and planning and who does the action, uh, then I think we can get, uh, then we can get some, uh, some great advances there and some of these intermediate steps um, that we're, like we're talking about in the Q&A, where we can get to, we have some relatively smart robots and some very smart humans have them working together to solve problems. Um, so we're looking at that, and this is a figure from, from Agnes's uh, paper last year. Um, so if you're interested in swarm robots, happy to talk about that. Um, but the, the primary point of my talk today is talking about, uh, like I said, CE internships. Uh, there's a long military history, in case you haven't noticed. Um, <laughs> there's a little bit of a Navy connection here. Um, but it's not only the Navy that, that's interested in RSI and, and uh, USABO uh, alumni. Um, so DOD laboratories in general have a big push towards STEM, uh, STEM education. Um, for example, uh, there. Uh, DOD labs, this is at the level of the Department of Defense, not any one of the particular branches. Uh, there's uh, so five different aims that they've got with STEM education. The first is to inspire youth, uh, do outreach in the K through K through 12 domain. Um, you, uh, that's part of what they do when they're sponsoring uh, RSI students. Cultivate future STEM talent through supporting and, and enhancing undergraduate and graduate students promoting increased participation of underserved groups in STEM activities and education programs, and enhancing the efficiency and effectiveness of STEM initiatives more generally. So the project I'm talking about today falls under the second category of uh, not just getting the awareness and the participation of folks K through 12, but actually uh, taking the students who are in undergra undergraduate and graduate levels and trying to keep them involved and give them more opportunities. Um, so DOD has been sponsoring CE since the beginning. Um, there's still an active in, uh, involvement in DOD. BEST has been involved re, uh, for many years in sponsoring um, uh, RSI students. Uh, currently, uh, uh, between 10 and 13 students every year uh, are funded by the DOD to come to RSI. Um, so there definitely is a, a strong involvement there. Um, and so the, the current program of the DOD internships uh, is trying to take these, um, is take students who've uh, come out of RSI and USABO and try to find them placements in DOD labs. 
Um, there are, uh, so DOD is the largest employer of scientists and engineers in the world, um, but a lot of people don't know about it in this, that sense. They think about it as, oh, government contractors are doing this, government contractors are doing that, but actually a lot of the research and development takes place within the DOD, and so we wanna uh, make there be opportunities for people to see what that research is like uh, and see if that's the sort of thing that they wanna do uh, and that's the, if that's a way that they wanna contribute. Uh, I know from my own personal journey, it wasn't until I was a postdoc that someone was like, hey, have you thought about do working for the Army? And I was like, well, I'm thinking about it now. Uh, talk to me about it. Um, and so it would be nice if we could let people know things like, hey, if you're a scientist in the Army, you work 40 hours a week, which if you're coming from, from, uh, from university, is like, that's, is that a possible thing that anyone could even do? Um, but it is. And so I encourage you, if you're interested in doing uh, science or engineering um, with a uh, um, the public spirited mindset and uh, would like to have your weekends free, uh, come talk to me about opportunities later. Um, so let's talk about some of those opportunities. Uh, this program started in earnest last year. Um, 2017 was the pilot year. There were 47 internships uh, that, were, that we floated out to, to people that they could possibly take. A lot of these were focused with the Air Force, uh, Air Force Research Labs, but uh, Air Force, Army, and Navy were all involved. We had 38 applicants. We had a really good uh, turnout, and there were 10 uh, folks who were eventually placed. Um, and, that was, and these were internships that were fully funded. Uh, so they got a stipend, they got housing, um, they got travel, uh, so it was, it was definitely not one of those, those internships where you have to sort of pay to do the thing. You're at, it was actually a funded thing. Um, and uh, the reports that we got from the students were, uh, were very positive. Um, I think the, the limiting factor in really placing people in these internships is that, uh, especially with uh, USABO involvement, there were a lot of folks who wanted computational biology. Um, and there were only so many computational biology things. Uh, I'll say if anybody wants to do material science, please apply to this. There's some amazing material science things. Um, and I, reading through these internships, I would like kind of wish that I could go back and like change careers like several times and do all of these things the same way that I kind of wish that I was researching jumping spiders right about now. Um, and so uh, if you're, but it, so I encourage you if you are uh, an undergraduate or graduate student, please apply this, this next time around. Um, and hopefully we can, we can find, a, find something for you there. Uh, la this year was the second year of the program. Um, the uh, DOD decided that, hey, actually that worked out really well, and there were 127 different internships offered this year. It's a huge increase over last year. F fewer applicants on the, on the uh, CEE side, but still a lot of really good qualified candidates, um, and we eventually got eight people uh, placed into internships uh, this summer, and I'm curious to hear how that went from everybody. I haven't haven't seen the responses back from that yet, um, but I think it's a, a really good program for getting folks to uh, to both experience this DoD research and um, which increases the um, awareness about folks. That they'll probably hopefully tell their friends that like this was interesting and what I learned, what I didn't, what was good and what was bad. I don't think DoD research is for everybody. It takes a certain amount of willingness to deal with bureaucracy. And uh, I'm now happy with that I'm working with universities because I can say, oh, it's so, things move so quickly in universities. Uh, yeah, and so if that's not something, if you, if you think that universities are too slow, DOD is probably not for you. But um, if you're willing to put up with a little bit of that, then there are some really cool payoffs. There's a lot of resources that are there. Um, uh, one in particular that, that I really like that, uh, a, a couple friends of mine work on out at, at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, something you're not gonna really find in industry. They've got a uh, six-axis uh, disorientation simulator. This is like when you go on the, the, the whirly thing at the fairgrounds, except this is up to three Gs continuous in the six axes. Um, to simulate f what happens when a fighter jet tumbles out of control. Um, and you don't really get kit like that in most uh, university or, or industry situations. And so um, giving more opportunities for people to work on these really interesting projects and these really interesting um, technical challenges and scientific challenges um, I think is great. And I think it's good for the DOD side to get a wide variety of people in, not just the folks that are sort of close at hand. Um, and so I, I think it's, this is one of those win-win situations for, for a lot of people. 
Um, so that's, that's all the basic content I've got on this, but I'm happy to take questions. And if you've got, uh, if any of you are interested in doing the program next year, talk to me and I can give you more information about it. Yes? What happened to the 119 internships that weren't filled? Ah, so this uh, is not the only program that the DOD is getting uh, interns. And so there's a, this is, a lot of these places have uh, standing relationships with local universities, and so there were other, other opportunities for them to get people. Um, this is just something that was offered. These are the ones that were offered to our students. And yes? So along the same lines, is that like transfer from the 17 applicants to the eight eventual placements, is that a no from you or a no from the student? Um, a little bit of both. So um, the eight is, that's who actually showed up this summer to do work. And so that's the matriculation rate. Um, some, uh, unsurprisingly, some people have a lot of offers of what they can do during their summer. And there is even one person this year who had a different DOD sponsored uh, 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 opportunity. And so um, there's a little bit of, of both sides there. And like I said, there's uh, people filling um, their what people tell us uh, is available six months out is uh, changes a little bit. Things get closer, but yeah, good question. I've been one of the lucky ones of following his career from being <laughs> RSI student in '97 yes. and studying the shape of, a sh of sharks whales and modeling. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, yes. <laughs> and uh, maybe not sleeping enough. <laughs> so, uh, Once or twice. Great lecturer and mentor who inspired students four in a row these recent years, mm -hmm. who told me that this Swarm Robotics is their dedication now. Yes. So my question would be, what are the main uh, differences in the challenges you faced as a student in RSI and as a mentor? Hmm. Um, I think one of the main challenges I faced as a student was just understanding how little I understood. Um, and also, at that point, realizing that the Navy had been trying to solve the problem I was working on for the last 20 years and hadn't gotten particularly far. Um, and I was relieved to see that finally uh, some deep learning applications solved my RSI project back in 2017. Um, so it just took 30,000 times more computing powers and six PhDs working on the problem. So I felt a less bad of not solving it. Um, and so that's definitely that experience of, you know, I, I learned quite a lot um, of, but trying to, trying to keep that in mind as I'm working with folks of the, you know, if they're, um, as the, the students working with are obviously quite bright. Uh, but ha don't necessarily have experience in the area where we got we assigned them. We're like, great, you know about computers. Now we're going to tell you about psychology. Now you have to learn how to run an experiment. Um, and so that uh, trying to trying to have to have empathy for their situation of not knowing any of the particulars, and trying to get them uh, to a point where they can make a contribution. I think is uh, that's that's what I'm trying to to bring forward from my experience there. Yeah, for us. For these last two years of the program, is there a sort of geographical clustering of the internships, or are they just sort of all over the place? Um, so, of the original offerings, there are some clusters because there's some um, larger laboratories where there's lots of things. So, like a few at Natick, uh, uh, Air Force Research Labs has several. Um, the uh, Army Research Labs has several. And there ends up being some clustering in where people end up, in part just because of the clustering of interest. Like I said, the um, uh, this year in particular, the, the couple labs that offered computational biology internships, they got a lot of people there because we have a lot of interest in that. Um, and so there ends up being some, some clustering. But uh, in general, DOD labs are uh, spread across the, the nation. There are 80 different DOD labs. Mm -hmm. Sure. So basically, like, all the labs sort of participate in this to some extent? We've had increased, it wouldn't say all, but there's a, a wide, yeah. Yes. So Dr. this sounds like a really awesome opportunity for the uh, CE alums. In the past few years, you noted the application numbers have gone down a little bit. What sorts of things do you think we can do, CE can do, alums uh, so can do to help kind of increase those applicants and make sure people know about the opportunities? Good question. Um, so it, I don't want to say that like it's it's tanking in the that it's two years worth of, of data. Uh, there was a much bigger push the first year to try to raise awareness since it was a brand new. Um, uh, brand new thing, and we definitely had some 
some folks repeat this year who uh, uh, had done it last year. So there was, um, so there was some, there was still a little bit of advertising, but we could do a lot more. Um, and uh, that's part of why I'm here today and tomorrow to tell you, to, to tell your friends. Um, but I think it's mostly an outreach thing. Um, just try to say, make sure people know this opportunity is there and um, you know, try to share the testimonies of folks who've done it the last couple of years of what they got out of it and um, try to give an impression of what sort of folks of what sort of interests. I, um, in particular, the thing I say is really trying to broaden the interest range of the folks participated. Like I said, um, uh, material science is not the hottest thing at RSI from the last few years looking at the things. But if anyone's interested in that, that's a really hot topic in DOD research. They want materials which are fireproof, waterproof, um, weigh nothing, stain proof, never need to be washed, just to, and cost nothing. They just want that. Uh, why can't you deliver that? Um, but they really, so there's a lot of effort uh, working on, on big problems like that. And so um, I think if you're interested in really ridiculous engineering science challenges, um, looking, at, uh, looking at DOD is, is a great place. So. Yeah. Yes? Launching off of Don's how can we help question, it almost seems like, um, you know, since the target applicants are undergraduates and graduate students, mm -hmm. that there's a real need for promoting this um, in universities you know, colleges and, and, you know, so to some extent at the high school level to, uh, you know, you would get some of the uh, the seniors and so on. But beyond that, it sounds like this is potentially not going to get off the ground until you have faculty who are also um, advertising to their students. You know? That would definitely help, yes. Yeah, so, like, is there any, um, are there any resources for CE to bring this to universities and have... I mean, like, one thing that I can think of off the top of my head, I mean, there are career centers and there are events targeted towards, you know, right. like, well, this alternative PhD, you know, there's, like... Yeah, so this, like, I mean, this particular now. program is just for CE alumni. And so this is not a general DOD internship program. Oh, I thought you said, I see, okay. Which is why we're, the relatively okay. small numbers, is because it's, it, this is specifically trying to take folks who've done um, USABO or RSI and, I see. So, and, the, so it's it's Mrs. D's holiday party and this. That these are the major. <laughs> yeah, the major the major things is okay. as that that email list that hopefully everyone's on. That, oh. That's how you knew how to come here. I see. Yeah, um, is the the primary advertising thing. There are other opportunities, but this one is, um, for people generally. They're uh, smart scholars, for instance, is a big one. Um, oh yeah. Uh, yeah, um, and so. Uh, and that's something, if, if anyone is, uh, wants some information more on that, I'm happy to, to put my Army hat on instead of my CEE hat and uh, start talking about, uh, about things there. Um, but yeah, this one is, is just CEE alumni. So. Uh, and is limited specifically to undergraduate and graduate students because of funding allocation reasons. But there, if you're not in one of those camps and want uh, some opportunities, again, talk to me and I can try to find some information. Yeah, what are the citizenship requirements for this? Like, do we have to be a citizen? Um, I believe so, um, at least for some of these. Uh, it varies location to location, depending on how strict the security is. Uh, but US citizen is, um, will definitely be easier. But we can, uh, we can probably find something where that's not required. Just, just depends on the security level of the installation. Thank you very much.